Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I am here with the final regular video for November and that is Mystery Box Monday, where I dive into a box of mystery supplies, pull out three items and create a project with them. I have had a couple of questions about where I've gotten my mystery box and I will give you some information about all of that at the end and where you can find current mystery boxes if you're interested in this silly project. But until then, let's dive into our box and get started with our project. So I reach into my mystery box and I do not look in this box and sometimes it is hard to get the things out without looking at them. But I reach in and I am going to pull out three things. I try not to let my sense of touch um, sway me too much, but honestly, sometimes it does. I was looking to see at the very bottom of this box if there's some pattern paper that I've been missing. And so far I haven't found any. So we just have like embellishments and stamps. And as you can see here, an ink pad. And this stamp set is a very cutesy, um, unicorn-inspired stamp set, which is a very different vibe than this uh, chipboard element here, which has more of a vintage, very soft um, vibe to it. So trying to figure out how to put these projects or how to put these pieces together into a project can be really complicated. So I focused in on the stamp set and it had a saying there that says, be the magic. So I'm going to use that as a title for my project, which is creating this Halloween trunk for my daughter's school trunk or treat event and how we like to kind of create a magical trunk so that the kids have a really good time at the event. And I'm going to use various bits and pieces from this kit. And that ink pad is a pigment ink pad, which means it's going to be great for colorizing the chipboard. Since I don't need pink chipboard for this story, I'm going to turn it green. And that goes very well with my photos. I'm also going to use the ink pad for a um, wood grain technique, which I have done not too long ago. And it is currently one of the techniques that I'm very fascinated with. So... The problem with this particular ink pad is that it's not very sturdy. So trying to do the wood grain, I, I'm on the backside of my white cardstock practicing the wood grain technique and it is not working out well. And I knew I was going to practice because that um, ink pad has a foam pad, which when you drag it across paper, sometimes chews up the pad, only it just kind of detached the pad entirely. So I went ahead and colorized my elements of the chipboard, and then I practiced more with that ink pad before I kind of finalized what I was going to do. And I'm going to use a brayer instead of just a direct to paper technique. In the meantime, I am trimming down some bits of scrap paper that I pulled from my scrap stash. This is largely going to be a monochromatic layout, but I am going to add in a little strip of multicolor pop to kind of go with the photos. And I'm going to focus on the red in that strip because there is red in my photos and it plays into the whole story and everything. Pardon me. So I am going to get those trimmed down. I am going to get those kind of organized into where they're going to go. And the reason I'm doing all this first is because I know I don't have to do the wood grain technique across the entire length of the paper. So I am going to see if I have plenty of room to just use the brayer and do one swipe of the brayer to get that wood grain. And as I'm laying everything out, that's going to give me a good idea. All right. And then I am back with the brayer. And the thing about pigment ink is that you can see the line where the brayer was well inked, and then as you keep going with this brayer, it's going to um, use up that ink and and become a different color. So that is why I wanted to lay out the other bits of my um, project first, so I knew it would cover up that very harsh line to this technique. And as I get all of those um, planks of my wood grain brayered down, I'm going to use the edge of my brayer and ink it up and create the textural pattern to the wood plank. And that will finish off my wood grain technique. Again, I have done this in some recent videos, but it is a fun little technique. And here you can see I've got the paper finished up both top and bottom. And you can see that it just adds a fun um, feel to what would otherwise be some simple inking. 
Uh, I am adding some more texture and lift to those paper layers, and that means I'm gonna need some foam tape to adhere my other elements to make it over the ridge of that lift. And I am turning my attention to the title. Because that stamp set phrase is on the smaller side, I do need to get away for that title to stand out more. So I'm gonna use very dark solid color cardstock with a highly contrasted white heat embossed um, title so that those elements, both the texture of the heat embossing and the color contrast between the paper and and the white embossing will help that title stand out more. Plus I'm layering it up on another chipboard piece, which is gonna give it lift off the page. So all of these small little techniques are gonna help that become a focus so that it really reads as a title. I also have my um, alphabet stamp off to the right of the screen there, and that's an older Stampin' Up! product that I am stamping out a word subtitle to go with my title. So now it's time to assemble. I have foam tape on all my layers. I've got my title die cut out and I used, that is a um, Spellbinders oval die set and I used the size so that it would span across my little chipboard piece. And I've got my subtitle there. I did have to um, kind of fix my subtitle because the stamp set I was using didn't have enough letters to fill out that very last letter. And when I tried freehand stamping that final letter onto my title, um, it went astray. So I just stamped an extra T off on the side, heat embossed it, and I'm gonna trim it down and glue it in place. And yes, there will be a ridge and a lip to it, but you'll still be able to read the title. So I'm calling that good. So I get it glued in place and trimmed down and that will finish that part off. All right, with my title done, it is time to see if I can make more use of that stamp set because so far I've only really done the title. So because this is a Halloween layout and those little girls are in unicorn uh, form, I guess you could say, I am gonna go ahead and do some tone on tone stamping in the background to kind of play up the Halloween theme. And um, stamping over the wood grain tone on tone Hmm, is it a perfect technique? Eh, I don't think so. But it gets a little more use out of that stamp set that I otherwise would have just used the one stamp out of. And I'm gonna stamp some of those extra phrases in there as well. So hopefully all of that together kind of reads very Halloween-y, especially with the color going on. And you can see how that tone on tone comes out in the end. And you know, I think it's okay. It's very subtle in the background and um, it didn't interfere too much with the wood grain, which I was worried about. So with that done, it's time to uh, finalize a few other elements and put everything all together. So I had kind of forgotten about that chipboard as I set it aside to dry because that chipboard had a glossy um, coating to it. The pigment ink will dry on it, but it does take quite some time. So I did leave that off to the side um, to, to give it that time to dry. So I have pulled out this other stamp set, which is something I got recently in my SCT sampler kit, and it's a Hero Arts uh, Christmas stamp set, but it has this kind of vine in it. And because the um, Halloween trunk we did was this giant uh, monster plant, and if you know anything about theatrical musicals, this is from The Little Shop of Horrors. And so that um, is a giant monster plant, and I wanted to include that with my embellishments. Now, after I got that stamping done, you can't really see it. Now, I can see it barely in person and it's not showing up at all on camera. And I'm trying to decide what I wanna do as I move on to my photos. I did have to trim those down to get them to fit around that extra border element that I put uh, at the bottom of the page to mirror the one at the top of the page. So as I'm getting all these photos trimmed down and put into place, I am thinking about what I wanna do with those floral elements that I turned into my monster and the additional stamping is supposed to lead into more of that monstery feel. And at this point, I think, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it because nothing's perfect and it's already there and I need to get everything done and move on with my day. Um, but then I'm gonna change my mind. 
So I continued on with the layout at this point and put my journaling in. And because my journaling is in a black ink pad, I thought, you know what? Let me go ahead and stamp those vines in black. And that will help carry that black from just that single area of the layout up to other parts of the layout. So I do have to carefully deconstruct the things I have put together and luckily nothing tore and became irreparably damaged. But I am gonna go ahead and stamp those vines in black. And some of these areas, because everything's already glued down in a place, I couldn't deconstruct it. So I will use freehand stamping where I do not attach my stamp to a block so that I can work around the lumps and bumps on the layout without um, over stamping onto elements that I don't want to. And then sometimes I will position my stamp block around the stamp and lift up any floppy edges of the stamp that I don't want to touch anything and then use that technique to get around those lumps and bumps on the layout. And it is imperfect, but I'm okay with that. I mean, I already have a little bit of that mixed media wood grain background going on back there, so it plays in okay with that. And I am much happier with the black stamping because it definitely reads a little bit more viney and that goes along with my photos better. So that will wrap up this layout for this time. And if you wanna know about those mystery boxes and where you might be able to purchase those, stick around for just a few more minutes. Hello, Misty here. I just wanted to pop in from my living room to let you know a little bit about these crafty mystery boxes and pardon the glare in my glasses. I tried fixing it and I don't know how to sit properly to get that to go away. Um, the mystery crafty box that I'm working with right now, I got from a company that was going out of business, so that's not gonna be available any longer. However, I did um, go online and record a little screenshot of me showing you some options of online shopping that you could do for these mystery boxes. And I cover a little bit of how I even got this um, project started a few years ago. And uh, I will tell you about those and then I will pop back in in a minute. All right, let's just take a quick look at some of the options out there. The first thing I'm gonna suggest is if you do just a general search for crafty grab bags, you'll get a lot of things coming up. Now, most of these companies like Crafty Bucks and Craft Closet, I've never heard of them, so I can't say anything towards what their grab bags are like or if they're worth it or if they're reputable companies. At any rate, I will show you a couple of places that I do know about and do trust. And the first one is Pink Fresh Studio and they have a scrapbook grab box. So if you are more of a scrapbooker, this might be a better fit for you. My mystery box is full of all kinds of things and um, I, from stamps to embellishments to all kinds of stuff. So it just depends on what you're looking for. There is also a Cherry on Top, a very reputable company. They have a selection of various grab bag mystery boxes from a large Black Friday warehouse grab bag to mediums, to very company specific ones. So you can check those out. Uh, Michael's also has some mystery bag products from very specific things like polymer clay to some of the similar Doodlebug mystery boxes. So that might be something coming from Doodlebug itself. But you can take a look at uh, Michael's and I just searched for grab bag there. And then Simon Says Stamp has a, what they call a crafty parcel, oops, which, um, was how I started this whole thing off a few years ago by buying their parcel and doing that first series of Mystery Box Mondays. Now, it looks like their crafty parcel is currently sold out. They might come up with some more, I doubt it, but if you wanna hit the notify me when back in stock, um, you could possibly catch one of theirs. Now, Simon Says Stamp is mostly a stamping and card making company, so a lot of the products there will be either small paper pads, which is less likely, but ink pads, stamps, um, stencils, small embellishments, things like that. So you could try that as well. So those are the ones that I know about at this point. And if I um, find any more of them, I can create a um, just a post in the YouTube app and you can check those out. So those are some options for purchasing a mystery box if you want to play this own wacky game yourself at home. Hopefully you can find something that you enjoy and and go for it because I, I mean, I tell you, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't do this, but because I do, it gives me a, gives me a reason to buy a box of goodies that I just don't know what they are and then be silly with it. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. 
humoring me in this silly project. At any rate, that is the end of my videos for November. I will be back, pardon me, I will be back on December 1st with um, a change in my normal schedule. I will be opening up my Spellbinders Advent Calendar from the December 1st to December 24th every day, live, well, not live, but real time and I will create a shorts video of that process, including some little crafty makes from card making to embellishment making to even possibly scrapbooking. Um, and that will be a daily shorts video. I will have some of my regularly scheduled long format videos for you for December, but not definitely not as many as usual. Um, I hope you will join me for what I do have for you for December and that if um, the shorts are not your jam, then you will join me back in January for my regular full-fledged um, schedule. So I hope you have a wonderful holiday season if that is the case for you and enjoy the waning days of the year until I see you back in 2024. Thanks so much for watching.